Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Uh, today we're going to look at a DIY track cleaning device. Now I actually had featured this in a previous video as it was an idea presented to me by a fellow railway modeler. So I'll pop up a link for that uh, particular video. But uh, this video here, we will actually go through the uh, modification process of this Lima shell tank wagon and see how we go. Right, okay, so here we have a selection of materials and tools so that we can carry out this uh, wee DIY project. So here we have the Lima Tank Wagon, uh, which I had bought off uh, eBay for a princely sum of five euros. <laughs> uh, so uh, very inexpensive um, to purchase. Uh, the only reason I'm using this is because I'm literally going to duplicate or mimic as much as possible the wagon that Colin had made uh, at Middleton Railway. So some tools that we need, of course we've got uh, our box cutter or craft knife. We have uh, a pair of wire cutters or rail, these are actually rail cutters but I actually find them extremely handy for pretty much everything. Uh, we have some small fine files for uh, filing plastic. We have a um, razor saw, uh, also for cutting some plastic. Some other materials include uh, double-sided tape. We have a couple of variations of poly cement or glue because we have the, the humbral fine poly cement. Uh, we have this humbral poly cement as well. And we also have... Um, some standard super glue um, because I, I actually want to see which glue um, is actually going to work the best in this situation. Um, so there's a gel and there's also a liquid form as well. So we, we have a couple of different Gorilla super glues as well. Um, now the uh, materials to, that we're actually going to use to retrofit to this wagon includes some just styrene plastic. Um, this is just an offcut of a piece of styrene plastic and I thought well this will probably do the job so I'll just use that. Um, it's possibly 1.5 mil uh, styrene sheet. Uh, we also need balsa wood. Um, now this is, um, it might be 2 mil or 2.5 mil uh, balsa wood. Um, doesn't actually say on there what it is because it's in inches because it's an American product um, and um, we also need some of these now I actually um I actually went and bought these uh, it is a number seven uh, knitting needle now um, you need two of these um, you might be able to pillage these from your wife's knitting set uh, without her noticing, possibly, but uh, I actually went and bought these. Um, they're very inexpensive, very cheap uh, from a craft, sh craft shop. Uh, what else do we need? We have uh, a drill, drill, which we'll need one of those. And I've got some other, like I have this, um, I've made this up uh, a while back, but it's, it's basically, it's kind of like a, a wood jig which I, I've actually used for all sorts of things and it just helps to um, for supporting and bracing stuff when you're cutting it. Now, uh, also another couple of items that we do need. Uh, I'm using some just some nuts um, which are going to be used for weighing this um, pad down. So um, I'm just going to put two of these on here which is pretty much the same as what Colin did at Middleton Railway. Um, which gives it probably just enough weight to sort of press down on the rails. Uh, anything would probably do, but I guess the, 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 the main thing is really is you don't want it so heavy that your locomotives are actually going to struggle to pull the wagon around the tracks. So there's a couple of nuts there. 
Um, in here we have just a little bit of IPA. Uh, so this will come in handy just for cleaning surfaces before we apply any glue. And um, of course some cotton buds to, um, to just uh, clean, clean any surfaces before we apply glue. So that's, uh, I think that pretty much covers all the equipment and tools and materials that uh, we're going to use in this project. So uh, we'll get started. What I'm going to do is test these different glues and actually see uh, which one is actually going to be the most superior glue in this situation. So we need a reasonably strong glue for the um, for this part of the uh, fitting. Right, the first thing we're actually going to do is I'm going to take a bit of this plastic card and we are going to just do some test pieces of glue. So I'm just going to uh, grab the craft knife. We're just going to trim just a little bit of plastic off the end of this. And I've got this on my cutting mat so that I don't go through the table, of course. So carefully does this. We'll just trim that off. A bit of plastic, so we've got that. Now we're going to, I'm just going to actually chop a few bits off. I already just chopped a little piece off there because I just wanted to see how see how this uh, was able to cut so we're actually just going to trim and this is where this jig comes in handy because this is gonna, this actually stops it from rolling around all over the place so we're just going to cut through there swirl it around and just cut through there so that's one now I'm going to cut three of these pieces off and we're going to do a little bit of a test on terms of the glue, which might be quite interesting anyway, to just see how these different glues actually stack up. Although actually two are actually the same brand, but uh, which is the Humbrol poly cement. And then we have a super glue, a couple of different types of super glue from Gorilla. So we'll just cut through here, cut those off. Right, so that's still got plenty left for our actual build. Right, now over here, this is actually something else I haven't showed you, um, block of wood and a couple of different uh, grades of sandpaper on it. And it just comes and they literally sandpaper is just glued to the wood uh, it makes for sanding down the uh, any rough plastic wood anything like that into a nice smooth edge so that's that's one and that's pretty good so shave down this one so we'll just speed our way through this one So um, that's pretty much sanded those down. I'll just pop that over there. Right, now, so a bit of IPA, because what I'm actually going to do is we're just going to maximize the, uh, the strength and adhesion. So we're going to IPA that, and then we're just going to IPA the, end of, the ends of these. So there's absolutely no dirt, grit, or anything on these. Clean that down. Right, so that's that IPA'd. Now, we'll go in that order. So we have uh, Gorilla, Humble Poly Cement, and the Humble Precision Poly Cement. So let's start with this one. We'll open that up. Put a blob. Whoops, that kind of rushed out quite a bit. And we'll put a blob of this in. Let's ho I have actually, you haven't used this. So that's actually quite a liquid form too. So maybe it is very similar to this stuff here, which is comes in the precision. 
if I can get it out. Right, that's that. That actually needs cleaning. I need to clean the end of that, but we'll just leave that over there for now. So I've just put them in the order that they are. They're off off screen, but they're in that in that order. Actually, hold on a minute. So that's the glues there. So we'll just leave these next to the each of the glue, so we know which one's which. And let's glue these on. Now we're going to have to, of course, wait for them to dry. Which end did I sand? That one. And the last one. Right, so that's the uh, that's the the test. So we'll just set that aside over here. And come back to that once they're dry. They shouldn't take too long, hopefully. So we'll, we'll look at this, um, the wagon itself and actually look at the parts that I want to modify on this so that we can install our undercarriage track cleaning pad. So um, the great thing about these um, wagons is the, uh, the tank just simply pops off the top. It's not even glued or anything like that. So it's easy access. So I think the first thing we're going to do, and this is actually what Colin did at Middleton Railway, is he actually removed a reasonable amount of this underframe in order to accommodate the uh, track pad and also accommodate where the nuts will go. And they, they sort of position themselves right up in underneath here. And so let's start. And this is where I've brought this in here. We've got our clips. So we're just going to start hacking away at the underframe. So the next step now will actually be to cut out a section of uh, styrene plastic sheet which will establish the base of the track cleaning pad. Uh, we're going to use this material here which I showed earlier and we'll just uh, get uh, sort out some measurements and we'll get that down to the correct size and position it within the underframe. Right, first of all, uh, we'll use a square here to um, just make sure that we do get a square section of the card. So I'll just draw a line down there. Now, we we'll might as well measure this out. So we're looking at, now we've got to consider the fact that the card has got to fit, um, the pad has actually got to fit in between the wheels um, but it's not actually going to drop right down below so I think it could actually go in between the brake shoes which is about there so I'm thinking five and a half millim no sorry 55 millimeters in length now we've got to consider also the nuts so when they're glued on to the underside that they're actually going to fit in here and then fit in between a so we've got to consider all the uh, sizes here so that uh, is going to fit in between there 
the SEC, I might need to go to 55 millimeters in length just for a start off. And then if it's too long, I can always trim it back. So um, as I always say, start off bigger than what you need um, because then you can always trim back. Whereas if you start off smaller, it's always near impossible to add to it. So we'll go with 55 millimeters. And then we want the width that we need in here. Now it's basically the width to cover the track, um, but also considering when we're going around corners that the um, that it's actually going to be wider, need to be wider than, than is actually necessary. And this is how much extra is actually poking out each side. So if you, you can probably see there the... Um, no, yeah, a bit difficult to show on the camera. So, um, but as I can see from here, the rail is actually still within the edge of the actual wagon frame. So uh, that should be fine. So we can make the width of the, uh, the actual track cleaning pad the same width as the wagon, or even actually it could be just slightly under and I'm going to round it down to 30 millimeters because that actually makes for a good size. So if we go 30 millimeters, So there we have our piece of uh, styrene plastic base for the track cleaning pad. I'll just give this a quick sand. So if we pop this uh, on here, we should be able to position that in there. And that's approximately where it's going to fit within the underframe. And um, it is this should be plenty of room. It actually might even rest on that bit. And then by the time you put the balsa wood in, uh, it may need trimming. But um, we'll just we'll just see how we go first. So we can probably actually, while I'm still waiting for that other glue to dry because it kind of fell out of the tube. So I think we could probably apply the balsa wood to the underside of this. So. We'll give this a bit of a clean so that we've got a good surface for the double-sided tape to adhere to the plastic. So we now have the, um, the piece of balsa wood, which I've just made exactly the same size as the, uh, the actual base of the track clean pad. Now I noticed in Colin's video, he had uh, beveled the leading and uh, trailing edges, uh, which is probably a good idea because if you leave it uh, square, of course that may well catch on things on the track. So we're just going to give this a bit of a trim on the edge and I think maybe we might be able to just run a knife through the edge as the here we go this comes in so handy this uh, this wee jig so we'll put on a rough 45 degree angle and let the blade follow the crease and there we have it, we have a, a nice 45, roughly, angle. Um, and then I might just finish that off with just a little light sand. So we'll just give it a bit of a light on the coarse sandpaper. And the idea would actually be um, when you've um, watching TV or something like that, 
is that you chop up a whole lot of balsa wood or an entire sheet of balsa wood, chop it up all to the right length, and uh, and sit while you're watching TV and make a whole a whole stack of these, uh, so that they're ready to go each time you want to change your track cleaning pad. So there we go. We now have that sort of nicely smoothed down and uh, looking good. So I have IPA that. So now we will uh, just get some double sided tape. Right, so I've got that, I've got the tape. We'll just stick this onto here. Nice and lined up. And we'll fix that in. Now, I did have a thought that maybe, I mean, there we go. So we've got that fixed in place, but I did actually have a thought of, do you, um, could you use Velcro um, instead of uh, double-sided tape? And um, it's worth exploring if, if anyone else is um, interested in making their own uh, track cleaning wagon, um, maybe maybe they'd give that a go. Uh, try, try Velcro instead. It would certainly make it easier in terms of actually replacing the pad uh, each time it got dirty. So this will then fit in underneath here and uh, it is starting to slowly take shape. So I think uh, the next process now, we'll actually head back to our knitting needles and actually uh, just see how they're going and uh, whether any of them are dry. Right, okay, we've given this a bit of uh, a chance to dry and uh, just looking at these now, so we'll just have a, we're just actually gonna have a little bit of a, a tension stress test on these and this is the humbrel and oopsie daisies it just ripped straight off this is the humbrel that came off pretty easily as well and this is and that broke as well so interestingly most of them are completely useless but i actually think out of the strongest ones the super glue gorilla super glue actually seemed to maybe have this the greatest amount of strength. Um, this has actually pulled up some of the styrene card. So uh, we'll go with the super glue, I believe, as a, um, for a start. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll actually glue these onto here. Um, for This is just for the weight. So we'll just pop these on. Right, so we've now glued some uh, nuts to the um, base of this uh, track cleaning pad um, with the uh, balsa wood on the other side. Um, so, and this is essentially going to slot into here and of course with the uh, undercarriage framework removed, the, the nuts actually just simply fit up in underneath there. So uh, the next step now, we will uh, attach the knitting, well, we'll cut the knitting needles to um, suitable length and uh, drill some holes in this and put it all together and see how it goes. So first things first, we will just sort of setting that out where that's going to be roughly. Um, we've got the pad there, so we're going to chop the knitting needles back probably somewhere about about that much length 
So that's how much we're going to chop off these knitting needles. So we'll do that part first. Right, so we now have our um, little knitting needle rods. So this is the setup that we've got at the moment. Now I haven't glued these because it's important we don't actually glue these. Uh, these need to be glued once they've th been threaded through holes in this um, underframe section. So, um, but I'm just lining this up so I can actually sort of roughly work out where these holes are going to go. And that looks to be about a good position there. Right, so there's our second set of holes. So I think the easiest way of doing this is actually to place this directly over the top. Now I think the easiest way to go would be to um, just uh, glue these into here and slot them through the hole. So we'll pop some glue on the ends of these, but first things first, we'll just give these a bit of an IPA uh, to clean them up. And what I might do is I'm actually just going to, well, I think maybe the easiest thing to do, we'll turn that around. We've got to make sure this is around the right way because I've slightly off-centered it. So um, by, not intentionally, but um, it's got to fit between those nuts that I've attached to the track cleaning pad. So put these in here. Now we're just going to put a drop of glue down the edge and onto there. Drop a glue down the edge and onto the other sort of for if we get the side of the nut to as well for extra bracing And then we'll position this over here Right, so I've now um, positioned these and glued them down to the uh, track cleaning um, uh, pad underneath. So we're just now going to let that dry and see see how it goes when it's when it's all set. Right, here we have it, all put together now. So um, as you'll see, we have the the sliding up and down track pad system underneath. And if we uh, take it and have a look on the side, we can see that the um, it just simply slides up and down on the knitting needles. And uh, we have a couple of nuts in there. You could add, I think I might add a, maybe a little bit more weight in there, but the idea is that this is um, essentially a free form or free flowing um, pad. 
system here so that it will just simply ride over the contours of the track um, and of course underneath is the balsa wood strip which um, once this gets really dirty um, it'll be a case of uh, just peeling that off the double-sided tape and putting a new piece on I've just run it on pushed it along a bit of track and as you can see I've already picked up a little bit but what we'll do is we'll pop it on behind a locomotive and take it for a run around the track and see how it goes and uh, fingers crossed that um, that it works and doesn't uh, fly off all the uh, points and so forth that I have on the layout. Um, currently the the body the top section is going through um, is in the spray booth at the moment uh, so I thought while I was at it I might as well get rid of the garish yellow shell and remove all the, the decals that are on the side and it's currently under a respray. We've now put it up track and we've got our class 24 to pull it around and we'll see how it goes. So let's get this thing going. See how it goes through these points. And another set of points here. Well, it seems to be working. Which is uh, which is pretty good. Um, Certainly not having uh, certainly not having any issues on the track. Um, the idea, of course, behind this is that um, that you don't just simply need to haul this track cleaning wagon by itself. You could simply um, slip it into a freight train um, configuration and um, it would just simply run around as part of a, a, a normal freight train. Uh, probably what I will do is um, paint the underside of the uh, pads um, in a black or dark grey or something similar just to um, camouflage the, the pad but um, otherwise that seems to be working pretty well we'll just bring it around one more time and, um, and then we'll take it off and we'll actually um, we'll have a look and we'll just see how dirty that balsa wood is see how much dirt it's actually picked up off the rails Right, the moment of truth. Let's have a look. Goodness me, wow, look at that. That is actually a lot of dirt. Admittedly, I haven't run any trains on the tracks for probably a few weeks. Let's pop it over here. But uh, that has definitely picked up a lot of dirt. And then I guess, of course, you could switch the wagon around and get it to run in the opposite direction because you can see where most of the pressure 
is actually applying uh, to clean the rails. But um, that that's amazing. That's really incredible. Um, now I don't know whether I can pick it up or not, but we'll just see if we can see what the rail heads are like, and they are looking pretty shiny and pretty clean. So. I'm actually very impressed. I think that's a great little wee system. And um, yeah, a big huge thank you to Colin at Middleton Railway um, for sharing his um, wee invention or track cleaning system. So um, that's excellent. Right, um, so there we have it. And uh, that's the, uh, um, the tank back on the top and I've just given that a spray paint of some grey so um, I will probably maybe do some weathering on that and uh, try and make it um, look a little bit more the part. Um, of course being Lima um, it's never going to look um, very authentic but um, yeah I think that'll do and it looks like we have ourselves a successful uh, DIY track cleaning wagon. So thanks for watching guys, I certainly hope you enjoyed today's video and uh, maybe you might uh, be able to find one of these wagons lurking in your collection that you'll be able to uh, resurrect and use as a track cleaning wagon. So I'll sign off now, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Cheers, bye.